So we're in the middle here of uh, deriving the quadratic equation. We've been looking at how to start with this general form of a quadratic and finish with the quadratic equation here to show you where it came from. So this is the last step where we were. We've been trying to solve it. We've got b squared over 4a minus c equals a times x plus b over 2a squared. The nice thing is this is at least factored for us. But now what we want to do is we want to continue to try to solve for x. Okay, that's our goal where we want to solve for x. That's our goal. So how do we do that? Well, it's just ugly algebra, but away we go. We can divide both sides. I mean, right now I want to get x on its own. So I've got to get rid of the a, I've got to get rid of the squared, and I've got rid of the b over 2a. So the first step I think is going to be to divide by a. That's what I'm going to do now. Whoops, it looks like 9. I mean uh, a. All right, so if I do that, let's see here, that means I just take this a and divide everything here by a. So this b squared over 4a becomes b squared over 4a squared, because there's another a on the bottom, minus c over a. All right, I have to divide that one as well, and that just gives me x plus b over 2a, all that squared. Now what I have to do is get a common denominator. I want these two to be the same uh, denominator. In other words, the same bottom of the fraction. So I need to find a common denominator. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm doing common denominator. So if I wanna do that, well, the denominator can be 4a squared. So that means then I can leave my b squared over 4a squared, but that means I need to make the bottom also 4a squared. Now I can multiply a by something to get it to be 4a squared. I just have to multiply it by 4 and by an a, because I need an extra a. So that means I have to multiply the top also by 4 and a. Well, then I have the c left over, so there we go. So that equals x plus b over 2a, all that squared. Well, now I can just put it together. So that means then I can just say, fine, that's b squared minus 4ac. Because I have a common denominator, I can write it all as over 4a squared equals x plus b over 2a squared. And we're not done yet, but we're getting there. Do you notice there's a b squared minus 4ac? So hopefully you, you remember that one. So that's uh, sort of a, a friend of yours, I guess you could say. Uh, so what we need to do now is go a little bit further, and this time uh, we need to take the square root of both sides. So I'm gonna do that on the other page here. So I had b squared minus 4ac, and I had that over 4a squared. Let me just double check, yep. So then I'm going to take the square root of that. I'm gonna say that equals, I have to go over to the right here, x plus b over 2a. And because I took the square root, that's no longer there. So it's just x plus b over 2a. But remember when you do square roots, it's also possible to have a negative. So it has to be plus or minus this because it could be plus this could be squared and give you this, but minus this could be squared and you get the same thing. That's because if you take a minus number, a negative number, and you square it, you always get a positive. So in this sense, we get the same thing, so we have a plus and a minus. That's important. Now what I can do is try to um, work a little bit on this one right here. Now it's hard to break up this square root into different pieces, but I can actually uh, break it up a little bit. So in other words, if I look at this, I can say square root of b squared minus 4ac all that over square root of 4a squared. I can say that as well. And the good news is, because of that, this is all nice and easy to take a square root of. In other words, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of a squared is just a. Therefore, I have plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over just 2a. You notice I no longer have a square root here. I've just replaced this bottom square root with this. That means equals x plus b over 2a. You notice I'm really getting close now to how it should look. Now I need to get x by itself. 
Right, so I'm going to um, do that. I'm going to actually get x on its own. So if I want x by itself, I'm going to have to move this over to the left. Um, actually, maybe I better just rewrite like this. I'll say it like this. I'll leave everything that was on the left side. I'll leave it like this. So it's plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all that over 2a. I'm going to say then minus b over 2a. Okay, that's the same thing as x. And that's because I just moved this term over to the left side. So it's like this. Now instead, I would rather rewrite it. So I'm just going to put the minus b over 2a first, just so that it looks. Let's go back here. I want it to look a little bit more like it's supposed to look like with a minus b term before the plus or minus. So I'm going to go on to the next page. Uh, this will be the last time we have to do it though. So it's going to be minus b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I just want to make sure I got that right. So I'm going to go look back. Yeah, so I wanted this first and this one second and that equals x. Well, if this thing right here equals x, I can also say then that x equals, you know, I can just rearrange this equation. I can put the thing that's on the right on the left and I can take all this junk and put it on the right. Now keep in mind, I've got a common denominator again. So this over 2a and something over 2a, I can rewrite them as the same thing. So that means I can put the x on the left, I can put all this stuff on the right, and because this has a common denominator, I can just rewrite them both divided by the same thing. So this, we've just derived the quadratic equation. Dun, 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 dun. So if we look at this one right here, this is, this is it. We've come up with it sort of from scratch. Now, yes, the algebra was a little bit ugly. Uh, in fact, it was quite ugly. Uh, maybe you feel a little bit sick to your stomach uh, after doing it. Oh yeah, this is a picture I found. This is what, this is a picture that made me think a little bit about what we're just doing here. So uh, if I do this, then this is, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're done, but <laughs> it's a little bit gross what we just did. So, I mean, yes, it's nice what we did, but we probably don't want to redo this all of the time, right? We did this for a general case. If I go back here, we started with a general form and we completed the square to get vertex form and then we solved it and we ended up with this. Now, the good news is you don't have to always derive this. Now that you trust me that this didn't just come from outer space, this actually came from, well, if we go back here, maybe some ugly algebra as I go back in the pages here. Um, or maybe I should actually go forward. So we started here, then we did this, then we did this, then we did this, then we did this. And finally, we ended up here. So you can do it. It's a bit ugly, a lot ugly, but it's doable. And all we needed just was some algebra skills. Um, it got ugly. Uh, and maybe you feel like uh, throwing up a bit, but uh, it's done. So the good news is that then now you can use this every time you have a quadratic that you want to solve. You can see that it didn't just come from anywhere. It's actually doable. You just start here, finish here. Hooray.